So, here we are. We're in Hammond, Ontario. It is sort of uh, southeast of Ottawa. And we're at Vans Blacksmithing. And here we have the blacksmith himself, Josh Van Noy. And uh, you can see his uh, fireplace is going there. So, Josh, yeah. tell me, blacksmithing, how did you get into blacksmithing? Well, I uh, always wanted to be a tradesman and I wanted to be a machinist and I thought where better to start than where all metal working started. I wanted to uh, get a grounding in metallurgy so blacksmithing is where I went and I approached the Ministry of Training at the time. This was back, oh, early 2000s and I told them I wanted to be a blacksmith. The guy smiled and said, well, it's still on the books as a trade, but good luck finding somebody to teach you. And uh, sure enough, I got lucky. The blacksmith at Upper Canada Village at the time wanted to train an apprentice, so he took me on and I trained with him and got my trade certificate. Went on to become a machinist and millwright uh, for a time, but I always kept the blacksmithing going and now here we are in my shop and this is my full-time vocation. So it's been an interesting journey, but it's been a worthwhile one. And that's really the sum of the story. It's uh, been about 15 years now that I've been doing uh, forging work. There we go. There's a nice hot piece of steel. So this is going to be a hammerhead. Like the old saying says, we're going to strike while the iron's hot. I'm just drifting out the eye for this hammerhead. Start by punching the hole through with a punch, and then you use a series of drifts to stretch that out larger and larger with our hammer handle. That steel, when it comes out of that fire, at that bright yellow color, sitting at about 2,000 to 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Get it nestled back into its coal bed. As you can see, the tools get relatively hot mm -hmm. in the short time that they're engaged with the work. That's awesome. So, so tell me, who, who are your customers? We get a, uh, a bevy of customers that come through. We have three facets to the company. Basically, we teach courses, um, we have supplies, and then we do custom work. Courses typically are um, young men and women from the ages of 35 right on up until 70. People looking for hobbies and uh, new kind of tangible hands-on experience. So we get a lot of individuals coming through for courses. I supply a lot of blacksmiths, believe it or not, with uh, custom tools. A lot of beginners. So they'll come to me for their hammers, their tongs, various consumable supplies. And then we get a whole host of um, customers looking for kind of custom work so everything from guild reenactors uh, right on through to the average Joe just looking for hinges for a gate so it's uh, kind of interesting in terms of the uh, variety of people that come through it's wonderful absolutely uh, I don't know how to describe it but I've seen people from IT government right on through to CEOs of companies right on down to you know farmers who've been farming the land for 50 years, so it's it's quite the uh, experience to get to meet everyone. It is. Well, I know you, there's a, the reality show on now, Forged in Fire, and you see all these guys whacking away at stuff, but, uh, you know, you're real life, you're out here in Ontario. That's right. Okay, you're do, doing a real job, so. Canadian I, Heritage Blacksmithing at its finest, right here. There you go. Kind of specialized between uh, 1700 1800 time period, so mm -hmm. a lot of the tooling uh, is directly derived from that time. You can see from our old post drill, our coal fire forges. I do fair, pretty much everything with hammer and anvil and tongs. I don't have a power hammer, trip hammer. There were some around at that time, but uh, not as commonplace as one might think, more in the uh, larger manufacturing areas. So I try to keep it uh, genuine to the trade as much as possible. It's about preserving a history as much as it is the trade itself. So for me, that's really the important part is making sure that we don't lose touch with uh, what got us going in the 
beginning when we were colonizing. So mm -hmm. little blacksmith shops like this were all over the place. They were, they were. Everything. So you're preserving the history. That's right. The, the pioneer days, sort of, in the area. Well, I, it's a, I adhere to that old adage, you have uh, to know where you've been to know where you're going. So There you are. That's important. Awesome. So for people that want to find out about it, your your website is vansblacksmithing.com or .ca? .ca. We're keeping it Canadian all the way. All right. So oh, that's fantastic. It's, it's great talking to you. That's and, a pleasure. And, uh, you know, just hope uh, that you just keep on doing it. I understand that you're, you're saying you're almost doing this seven days a week now? Yes, indeed. It's uh, become very, very... Uh, popular there's lots of demand for it and you know if uh, all goes well I'll be doing this well into my retirement years so I'll be very happy to be able to continue to pursue this <laughs> that's awesome all right thanks a lot Josh and the best of luck well thank you very much